Hey everybody, welcome back to the course. Hope you're doing well. Let us start writing code. Now I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention this in the intro. I have a Notion page, which you can access in the course notes that has a pretty good write-up of a lot of different important things to remember and sample queries. So you could uh, definitely take advantage of that and um, use that, copy some code. Another thing I wanted to highlight was, unlike when I recorded many of the original lectures, what you can do now is you can just take screenshots. Like I could take a screenshot. Let's just say, you know, you were following the video, you're not, you're not writing the code, you're just trying to follow along, but you, you wanted something to write the code for you. You can go to Bard and just take a screenshot or chat GPT and take a screenshot and just ask it to convert the screenshot to code. So I, I do that a lot. I just take screenshots of things and I ask AI to convert it to code and it does a pretty good job. So, all right, what are we doing in this video? So for some given date, we wanna get the user ID uh, and the session ID and also the number of sessions for that user ID. And the, the point of this is we, we need to learn how to deal with the event parameters field, the event params field, and how to unnest that. So I'm, I'm just starting with the, the query that we had in, in the first video. And of course, you could go to that Notion page and find a bunch of queries just to get started. So we're only going to query for uh, December 9th. I'm not worried about querying across a range of dates. And I'm not necessarily worried about the event date. We could leave it there, though. Um, so wh what do I what do I need to do though? So what, remember, every row is an event, and an event is like a table name. So if I want to get the uh, the user ID, session ID, and number of sessions for that um, user, maybe I can use the event called uh, what would be a good event? Maybe I'll use where the event name equals uh, session start. Let's see, let's see what we could do there. And if we look at, if we look at back to our event names, right? Session start, okay. That's a standard event name. I think it's probably a good way to get all users and all sessions in play. So we'll just use that. Now, what do we need to do? So I'll get the, um, pseudo user id sorry the user pseudo id so i got the date the user pseudo id now we need to get the the uh oh we got to get the session id now where is that remember when we look at our data the session id is in the event params field so let's just let's just do it the naive way you know let's just get rid of that hit command x and just, just write it out. Let's just do, you know, event params, right? What, can I do that? I'm not going to order by anything. I don't need to group by anything anymore. So let, let me clean that up. Will this work? What will this actually do? This query will process 29 megabytes. Let's see what it does. Okay, and it does indeed return data, so I have my, my fields, but, but this is still kind of a big mess. I, I just want the event params where the key equals, uh, you know, uh, session ID, GA session ID. That's what I want, right? Session ID. So what if I just said I want the event params dot key? What will that do? Cannot access field key on a value with type array. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, what if um, what what if I unnest this, right? What if I say unnest event params, and be sure to spell it right. What happens here? Syntax error. Can't unnest event params. Well, what if, what if I put it? What if I put it here? Uh, and I'll just call it p. All right, that did something. So I, I'm unnesting the params and I have P. Let me put a P there and just see what the heck P is. And I'm, I'm fumbling through this on purpose because I, I don't want to just go straight to like the wizard strategy, which you'll see a lot in other code. 
I want to kind of take it bit by bit. So, all right, I've, I've got P. Now, what is P now? I've got key. I've got string value. I've got all this other stuff, right? And, and the session ID is a, it's an int value. So what, what if I do, I, I say p.key and, and p.value.int value. Can I do that? Yeah, I guess I can do that. So we'll let this run again. Hey, why are you taking so long, big query? What did I do to you? Sorry, it's taking a moment. I'm just going to cancel it. And maybe I'll just add like a limit 5 or something just to just to speed it up. Maybe I'll even start another tab. No idea why that's glitching out on me. All right. So now we have something interesting here. We, we've we unpacked or unnested our, our event params, and, and we've got the key. We've got the, the int value. And what do I really want? I, I just want where the p.key is the session ID, right? Okay, and p.key equals ga session ID. Okay. That's cool. So we, we're, we're doing something, right? We, we, we got something out of this nested mess. And what else do we need to do? So I've got the user ID, I've got the, I've got the session ID, and now I just need the number of sessions for that user ID. Okay. Um, how would I do that? Well, would I do a count of distinct mm, p.val.intval? Okay, I, now what do I have to do? I need to group by the other things, right? So I'll come down here and say I'll, well, I can't do that in between my, my where clause, but I'll group by one, two, three, four, and we'll run that. Okay, and I should give that a name as uh, sessions per uh, user. And let's see what we have here. So, it, it, I mean, I only have five rows, right? So can I be certain that my business logic is right? Should I assume that all of these users have but one session? Maybe I can... If I can like order by sessions per user descending just to see what's up, maybe some users have more than one, you would think. Well, that's strange. No users have more than one session. Kind of weird, right? I don't know. I've, I've never done this before. What if we, um, what if we try another day? What about the 19th? Still the same story. Interesting. So is it possible that on these days, no user has more than one session? What could be happening here? Well, think about, think about what we have. What is in this row? We have an event date, a user pseudo ID, a key and a value. It, I mean, we are grouping by all these fields, which collectively make this count distinct operation only count uh, one value. So I think we might have to do something like count distinct and over uh, partition by the user pseudo ID as sessions per user. That way we'll control the logic of the count. So it says, oh, I'm not just going to count how many unique GA session IDs I find for these unique row groupings or combinations. I'm, I'm going to do it on the basis of the user pseudo ID. And now I'm thinking back to the slide where I said the tools that we're going to need, we're going to need window functions. We're going to need to change the way we process the aggregations 
with respect to the data set. So now let's just, let's just confirm that, right? Let's not take it for granted. Let's think about what this is doing and verify its behavior. So allegedly this user pseudo ID has, um, what does it have? It has five session IDs for that day. So what, what if I just took this whole query? Uh, I commented this out. Moved it down here, and I said, and user pseudo ID is equal to this specific value. And I will not count any more because I don't need to. I just want to look at all the rows for that particular user. I no longer have that value. I'm not going to limit anything. So let's take a look. And I guess that is a string value. So hopefully we'll see five rows and five different session IDs for that user. Yeah. And lo and behold, we do. So we've sort of solved the problem here that we set out for ourselves. We want to get the user ID, the session ID, number of sessions for that user. We used unnest on event params and we got the session ID. And I wanted to show you one other common way. This is sort of the standard way of using unnest in BigQuery in, in non Google Analytics uh, export schema tables. But there's another way to do it, which I will highlight here, which, which is a little, mm, you know, a little bit simpler, a little bit less bulky. And let me throw it in here. I'll just comment this out. And again, not doing anything really new. Put a comma there. So we're getting some session start data. And notice that we, we just have this, this like inline subquery. So we're basically just saying, Hey, we have these kind of first order flat values. And then we have a subquery that says, Hey, I want to, I want to go into event params and I want where the key is equal to GA session ID and the value is equal to the int value. And if you look at the above query, you'll recognize the similarity between P P dot key P dot int value. And if you look at the data, you'll recognize that we have the, uh, the key is equal to GA session ID. Where is it? There it is. And the int value of, of whatever that is, 959 or whatever in that particular instance. So uh, think about that for a little bit. Really make sure that you understand this key part. And if you're new to SQL, this might drive you crazy. But why, why did we have to do this? Why did we have to compute sessions per user using the partition by user pseudo ID to get sessions per user during that day? And why did this always come back with one? And I'll reiterate that the reason is because if you do a count distinct of the session ID, which is the in value of the unnested parameter, without this, you're basically just counting that for every event date, user ID and session ID, how many session IDs do you have? It's just one because we're already at like the maximum granularity possible. But if we're just trying to count on behalf of that user, well, you need to partition by that user. So hopefully that made some sense. In the next video, we're going to focus on joining across events using some of our common keys like session ID or user ID. And then I'll start leaving you with practice problems at the end that build on the example given just like earlier in the course. See you then.